My name is William Scholl, and in this video for Shout Festival, in association with Round Lemon, I will be discussing personal symbolism and how it can be used to explore one's identity in artwork without outing oneself to the full audience of a piece. For the sake of this video, I will be using examples of personal symbols in my own work and ways I have developed queer narratives only meant to be understood by those I choose to share a work's significance with. While visibly and blatantly queer artwork is a beautiful thing and something that I truly enjoy making now that I am in a position where I can safely do so, it is not always safe or possible for queer artists to have someone know their identity as a queer person, or for queer artists to have that identity recognizable by every viewer of their work. However, that doesn't negate the fact that being able to explore your identity in artwork as a queer person who is an artist is extremely important. So this video exists to talk about the ways that one can still do that while prioritizing your safety and autonomy in who you choose to be out to. In fact, some works with subtle symbolism can even be done to an extent where they are meant to be understood by certain members of the audience by using very subtle symbols that other queer people will pick up on, but people who aren't as in tune with the community will not be able to grasp. For example, I often do under sketches with my work, um, particularly when I'm doing figures, in which I include lines on the chest as a subtle reference to top surgery. These lines could just as easily be gestural markings, however, trans audiences are able to pick up on this symbol and have recognized when such pieces are actually about existing as a trans masculine person and the importance of gender affirming surgery. Symbolism aside, this also has the artistic value of pulling the sketch through the artworks, allowing the piece's beginnings to be exposed and displayed in the final piece. One of the things that I will mention a lot in this workshop is how queerness can be explored in visual art through personal experiences. This even works for small references that are only fully understandable on a personal level because these too work to elevate your art. A portrait of a lover or a relationship that is significant to you and your growth as a queer individual does not need to be fully explained in order for the work to be appreciated. Stylized and abstracted explorations of these concepts the attempt to paint a relationship or a friendship all on one canvas can lead to emotionally driven works fueled by queerness and full of it, and that doesn't lose value if you are the only one in full understanding of it. My first work to be judged and selected for a New York City gallery was such a piece, and the viewers brought their own experiences to their appreciation of it. Because it was personal to me, it was impactful to them in different ways. Thus, while I was not outed to every viewer of the piece who didn't know who and what I had put on the canvas, the work and the audience's appreciation of it benefited from the beauty of queer art. This can be taken further to pieces that don't depict figures at all and reference very specific moments in the artist's understanding of themselves. When I was banned from creating trans artwork at university, I created a series of small statuettes focused on my experiences as a trans person and my relationship to gender-affirming surgery. The professor was told that these statuettes were an exploration of works related to statues from antiquity and inspired by modern pieces. It's very helpful to have alternate explanations for works if necessary. During the creation of these sculptures, I received a call related to my attempts to schedule top surgery and was given a phone number to call and schedule an appointment, which I carved into the lid for one of the statues. This statue was a bust with a lidded hollow cube for a head. I washed down the number just enough to make it illegible, but kept it, and the piece was praised for its unique textural moments. I got to keep a part of my history in fired clay and explore my relationship with gender and sculpture, and the statue itself received high marks for the use of what looked like time-worn etchings on its lid. This is yet another example of the fact that even if the significance of a symbol is not known by the audience, its value in the work is not lost. 
Queerness can also be explored through one's relationship with common motifs, myths, and stories found throughout art, which you can really take and reinterpret and shape into mirrors. I do a workshop with Brown Lemon looking at the myth of Narcissus through a trans lens, and from that I take the symbol of yellow flowers, which is my personal way of alluding to the daffodil from that myth, as a nod to gender euphoria in my works. Even if the piece has nothing to do with Narcissus otherwise, throwing in a yellow flower is a nice little nod to transformation in a positive sense and a newfound love of one's reflection. This painting in particular is a great example of using deeply personal symbolism because it's one that I've completely built off of ideas to discuss my identity as a queer trans man but that are really only understood by myself and those I explain them to. It's a conversation with my past works, and past studies I did on the theatrical character of Ophelia, from Shakespeare's Hamlet. I spent a lot of time exploring the way she was depicted and the real tragedy of her demise, which I won't go into too much detail with now, but it is a moment that artists often explore, and I felt it was very interesting. My interest in depicting this character in my works and my ability to relate to her also happened in, at a moment in my life when I was a queer person who did not yet know they were queer, who was lacking that support, that understanding, and that community that is really necessary for a queer person to thrive. I was fascinated with painting her looking at Gertrude, who had watched her slowly drown in the water in a way that held Gertrude accountable. I was interested in painting her crawling out of the water. I painted her quite a lot during that time. And what I wanted to do years later was to talk about how my ability to be queer had changed my relationship to her and to myself. So I started to paint not just Horatio, who is the gayest character in the show and its only survivor, but a transition from Ophelia to Horatio. And Ophelia with fists full of hair refusing to drown, and a Horatio with strands of torn hair still clinging to his shoulders, bare and sun-touched, free of the clothes that drowned Ophelia. The work is a conversation between me and pieces of my past. It was an exploration of queerness and growth and the way it changes how one interacts with art, stories, and styles. As such artwork is deeply personal, it won't be exactly the same for you. That's not to say that if any of the motifs, stories, or styles mentioned in this video inspired you that you shouldn't draw from them, because you definitely should. But each individual will have their own stories and ideas to put into their work and their own unique symbols that resonate with them. You could even use the still life or paint depictions of objects that have meaning to your identity or personal significance, such as this example of paintings or drawings depicting testosterone injection bottles. And if you don't like the idea of a still life, you could paint a picture of an event or a moment with friends that resonates with your understanding of yourself and your exploration of queerness in your art. What you should do, really, is draw stuff that means something to you, that resonates with you, however abstract or specific it is. Draw something that you treasure, take something that burns in you, and represent it or explore it as much as you safely can. You can pour your heart onto the paper and then paint over it if it's too much, because you can always paint over it something new. But don't feel like your art isn't queer, or that your art cannot be queer. Art is a very diverse means of expression. These are just a few examples of the ways in which I continue to make art that is queer, even in situations where I could not safely be out or I was just not ready to. The moral of this workshop or this video is to just let people know that you don't have to choose between your comfort and safety or exploring the themes in your artwork that are important to you and your identity as a queer individual. For me, representation is very important now. In my works, it's something I really focus on, especially for transmasculine people, as I don't see myself in museums, and that can be disheartening. With Round Lemon, and now thanks to this workshop with Shout, I'm able to explore openly representing trans and queer work, which means a lot. I would like to take a minute to thank Shout and to thank Round Lemon for making this video possible. Furthermore, if someone watching this feels underrepresented, I do take requests in regards to paintings focus on representation and I also do commissions.
I can be contacted on Instagram or found through my artist associate page on Round Lemon.